Today we're going to talk to you about PACs, PIDs, and PNIDs, or controlling a biorefinery with LabVIEW. Uh, in order to give you a little bit of context here, we're going to talk about what it means to be mission critical. For the purposes of uh, this uh, discussion, I'm going to define mission critical as a system where failure is not an option, or at least a very expensive one. So whether it's high reliability, ruggedness, safety critical where lives are at stake, or just simply a high uptime expectation with intense pressure behind it, <clears throat> a mission critical system brings with it a sort of a, a unique expectation of uh, software development and software quality. Since 2004, SignalX has been involved in these type of mission critical systems where we are putting uh, uh, data acquisition and control devices on uh, primarily automotive manufacturing uh, plant floors. And we have learned to adjust to that environment. And uh, in 2011, we were given a pretty unique challenge to control a uh, biorefinery. Now, uh, a biorefinery in this case uh, uh, was uh, commissioned as actually part of a Department of Energy uh, grant, uh, and uh, it is, its mission is to turn wood chips into diesel fuel. So there are actually two parts to the system. One takes uh, uh, wood chips or rice hulls, which they call feedstock, turns that into uh, uh, syngas, which is basically a gaseous hydrocarbon. Okay? And then the second process takes uh, that syngas through a catalytic reaction to uh, uh, diesel fuel. This plant is designed to take in about 25 tons per day of uh, biomass, and uh, it's a um, uh, very large system. Uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's about uh, two football fields big. So it's a fairly large system, requires distributed I/O, and, and quite a number of unique challenges. In order to solve these challenges, we set up an architecture that uh, broke up the responsibilities for running the plant uh, among the various computing elements that uh, were involved. So you have the uh, uh, Windows uh, PC, just a standard PC, only responsible for viewing what is happening at the plant. It's the primary operator interface, and it's used for configuration and uh, things like forcing and uh, understanding what the plant is actually doing. But it's not required to operate. A lot of that responsibility resides at the real-time uh, level with the uh, PXI controller running uh, LabVIEW real-time, and it is a decision engine. Uh, it uses our PAX technology to bring in all of the data from the control elements at the remote uh, distributed EtherCAT chassis uh, and uh, the real-time side brings in all of that data, turns that into what should I make the plant do today, okay? So it's responsible for interlocks, for safeties, uh, for controlling things like augers and uh, catalytic reactions. And it relies on the distributed I.O. Uh, via the EtherCAT chassis to actually deploy those instructions into uh, real-time control. Okay, so uh, there's about 10 EtherCAT chassis in this particular plant, and it's responsible for things like PID control and connecting to all your sensors. So uh, all PID control resides on board the remote uh, distributed I.O. chassis, and, uh, and it's, uh, again, if that link is severed, you have some sort of critical action, critical uh, uh, set point that you're trying to maintain, it does maintain it. Along the way, we developed a couple of key innovations. Uh, that uh, were required to make this operate successfully. The first at the uh, view level of the PC is a, a, a very large uh, multi-screen interface to both halves of the plant. If you walk into this plant, which is a 40-foot long blast-proof trailer, you're going to walk in and you're going to see six giant screens in basically a war games display designed to highlight all of the things that are going on with the plant at any given time. These type of systems are very critical when it comes to uh, making sure that an operator 
understands exactly what the plant is doing and why. So not only did we have to go after a very large multi-screen, uh, large format display, but we wanted to make it as configurable as possible. So we were able to map the I.O. from the PXI controller that was running real time up to the uh, PC interface on a configuration basis. So you didn't have to have, uh, you didn't have to change LabVIEW source code in order to change the mapping of variables into what you were seeing. At the decision level, which is the RT side, uh, we developed a, a technology that we're showcasing uh, today at the booth, which is called PAX Automation Technology. Uh, PAX is a decision engine that takes in all of the data that's required for the plant to operate successfully and configures it in uh, uh, a format that doesn't require LabVIEW to change, uh, change the action of the, the re refinery. So it uh, uh, emulates ladder logic, and it's based on uh, the concept that at the controls engineer level, they don't want to mess with source code. And in fact, we don't want them to mess with source code. We all know that uh, in, a, in this type of environment, as you modify source code, <clears throat> you have to go through uh, a very intensive software quality process. So anytime you touch source code, you're going to uh, need to requalify the system. So we gave them a very configurable logic engine that allowed them to change the behavior of the plant at, uh, you know, at, at development. Okay? So as they were running, they were able to uh, adjust the behavior of the system to adapt to their needs. And then uh, at the control level, the lowest level at the distributed chassis, all PID control happens on board. Now, this may not seem like much of an innovation until you realize that you could have anywhere from four to 16 channels of, of control, uh, and you need it to support four to 20 milliamp signals, uh, bumpless transfer, and anti-windup, all things that are readily available at the PC level, but uh, was quite a challenge to uh, not only develop, but to fit on the uh, FPGA. So the key outcome here, <laughs> is that there's an operational biorefinery that's converting wood chips into diesel fuel. And it was commissioned in the September of 2012. They're on track to have about 1,000 hours of total runtime to meet all their Department of Energy milestones for their grant program. The system itself is two PXI controllers that are connected to 10 EtherCAT chassis with over 3,000 points of I.O. It's an impressive, it's amazing, it is an amazing system to go and watch and to see an operation because it really showcases the power of LabVIEW and the power of a configuration-based system that uh, enables non-LabVIEW uh, users to uh, be successful and to put a, a very uh, mission-critical and safety-critical system at, at work.